praise God. So glad to be back in the house of the Lord again. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Praise God. I'm glad ain't nobody got to twist my arm. Amen. Praise God to make me praise God. Amen. Glory to his name. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. The psalmist said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. We've already prayed this morning. We're going to get ready and go right to the scriptures. We're going to the book of Matthew this morning. Amen. Book of Matthew, the 12th chapter. Amen. I'm going to, uh, this morning, I'm going to read from three chapters. I'm going to read from Matthew 12 and Mark 3 and Luke 8. Both of them are the same things, but I just kind of want to read them out both uh, to, to, to get a good feeling of it. And then we're going to move on. Amen. Uh, I guess I go ahead and I'll uh, give you my thought now, but it will come up later. Uh, my thought this morning is we are family. We are family. We're family. Look at your neighbor and say, we are family. We are family. Amen. Okay, let's go with Matthew 12, 46 to 50. Y'all ready? Let's read. Matthew 12, 46 through 50. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without. That without means outside. Desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother? And who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. Amen. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. You see that? Mark 3, 31 through 35. Mark 3, 31 through 35. We're going to go to that one. There came then his brethren and his mother, and standing without, outside, sent unto him, calling him. And the multitudes sat about him, and they said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee. They're outside looking for you. And he answered them, saying, Who is my mother or my brother? And he looked round about on them which sat about him, and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother and my sister and mother. Let's go to Luke 8, 9, and 21. Luke 8, 9, and 21. Luke 8, 9, and 20, 19 through 21. It says, Then came to him his mother and his brethren, and could not come in for the press. And it was told him by certain which said, Thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to see thee. And he answered and said unto them, My mother and my brethren are these which hear the word of God and do it. Amen. Turn this fan down a little bit. Blow my pages around. Amen. And he answered and said unto them, My mother and my brethren are these which hear the word of God and do it. So my thought for today is we are family. Now we're going to get a little deep with that today. Amen. We are family. Amen. And he answered and said unto them, My mother and my brethren are these which hear the word of God and do it. The Bible goes on to tell us, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving who? Your own selves. 1 John 3 and 10 puts it like this. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Uh-oh. The children of God and the children of the devil. Now we say we are family. Okay. In, the children, in this, the children of God are manifest and the children of devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. You see in these three passages of scripture this morning, Jesus uses the example of a biological family to teach. Get that. To teach that we can be a part of another family, which is a spiritual family. We have a biological family, and we have a spiritual family. Your biological family, of course, is your mother, your father, your natural mother, father, brothers, and sisters. But he also is teaching that we can, have a, that we can be a part of a spiritual family. And that's what we're talking about today when we say the term we are family. We're talking about spiritual family. 
Because God knows all of us are not come from the same mom and dad. Is that right? But we sometimes forget Jesus had a biological family also. His mother was named Mary. We all know that, right? But he also had brothers and sisters like a lot of us. Some of you may have not heard or read that Jesus had brothers and sisters. Well, in Mark, the sixth chapter, the third verse, listen to it, Mark 6 and 3. The crowd said, is this or is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, and Joseph, and of Judah, and Simon, and are not these his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. You saw, these was actually Jesus' half-brothers and sisters because they had the same mother, but they had a different father. Right. We know that Joseph was the father. We believe that Joseph was the father, amen, of Jesus' brothers and sisters. But of course, Jesus had another father, the living God. Am I right about it? So when his own biological family came asking for him, it almost seems like Jesus was being rude to them by not granting their request. In other words, they were saying that they are outside seeking you or wanting to talk to you. But in the beginning of his ministry, his family members didn't understand really what Jesus was all about or what he was doing. They even thought that he was a little crazy. His biological family. Mark describes their attitude in that same chapter, chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. I'm going to be reading it from the King James Amplified, but you can read it from the King James. Mark 3, 20 and 21. Listen what it says. Then he came to a house in Capernaum, and a crowd formed again so many people that Jesus and his disciples could not even eat a meal together. When his own family, get that, biological family, when his own family heard this, they went to take custody of him. For they were saying, he is out of his mind. They say, he is out of his mind. What did it say right there on 21, on, on, on the King James? Say, when his family, go back to the fish you had. Okay, go ahead. All right. When, when his family, okay, and the multitude were coming together again so that they could not so much as eat bread, and when his friends heard of it, they went out to lay hold on him, for they said, He out of his man. He don't, what's wrong with him? Talking about he the son of God. We can read again in John, the book of John. The seventh chapter and the fifth verse, John 7 and 5 says, For neither did his brethren believe in him. John 7 and 5, let's put it up there. As I get, get this John 7 chapter. Go to John 7 chapter, starting the first verse. Let's read that there. John 7 verse. I guess I'm going to be reading it from a different translation this morning, the New Living Translation. Can I read that from the New Living Translation? You got that one, sis? All right, let's, let's look at uh, chapter 7 of John. And maybe you can understand when the crowd came up and told him that his mother and his brethren was out there, maybe you can understand a little bit better when he said, who is my mother? Or who is my brother? Listen to what John chapter 7, 1 through 5 says. After this, Jesus traveled around Galilee, he wanted to stay out of Judea where the Jewish leaders were plotting his death. But soon it was time for the Jewish Feast of Tabernacles. And Jesus' brother said to him, watch this, what his brothers told him. Why don't you leave here and go to Judea where your followers can see your miracles? Why don't you go over there where all them that's following you can see what you're doing? You can't become famous if you hide like this. Don't want to go over there. If you, can, if you can do such wonderful things, show yourself to the world. If you can do all these things that you're saying, why don't you show yourself to the world? Look at verse 5. For even his brothers didn't believe in him. Y'all see that? Here they are actually somewhat mocking him. Why don't you go over there where all the world can see you? Where the crowd going to be at? If you do all these miracles, why not? Why hide? Don't you go somewhere where they can see you? His family. 
his own brothers, didn't believe that he was actually the Messiah, the son of the living God. Raised up in the same family. I'm sure somewhere down the land, the mother Mary, I'm sure she probably told him that the angel that came to her, maybe Joseph told him, but yet and still, they're looking at their brother in a different way. Now I could pause and preach here. I could say a lot, but time, somebody say time. Time won't allow it today. But listen to the book of Matthew, the 13th chapter, and I don't expect her to keep up with me as I read these scriptures for time-wise, but Matthew 13, starting at 54 through 58, it says, And when he was coming to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue, and so much that they were astonished, and said, Whence hath this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brother and James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all with us? Whence then hath this man all these things? And they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Their failure to honor him and believe in him didn't affect him of who he was or who he is. But guess what it did? It affected their blessings and did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. That's why we got to learn how to walk by faith and not by sight. We got to learn how to trust in God. Okay, look, look at it from Mark, the sixth chapter, verses one through six. He says, and he went out from thence and came into his own country or his own home, or his own hometown, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue and many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence is this man these things, and what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Is not this the carpenter's son, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judah and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. We're seeing where all the different gospel writers are writing the same thing, that they was there, they heard it, they seen it. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country. And what? Among his own kin. Sometimes it's your own kin, folks. that can't see God working in you. Ain't that something? And in his own house. In your own house. Not only was the kin, folks, but in his own house with his brothers and his sisters. And he could, watch this, and he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled, or he was amazed because of their unbelief. Ain't that something? Now maybe we can understand a little bit better now why Jesus said what he said in our text. Let's read it again from another translation. And Jesus was speaking to the crowd. His mother and his brother stood outside asking to speak to him. Someone told Jesus, your mother and your brothers are outside and they want to speak to you. Jesus asked, who is my mother? Who is my brothers? Then he pointed to his disciples and said, look, these are my mother and brothers. Anyone, get this, anyone who does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Kind of helps us to understand more why in church we call each other brother so-and-so. Uh, sister so-and-so. I can say brother Stanley, brother Leon, brother Tim, uh, sister Risa, uh, sister Hattie, sister Risha. You see what I'm getting at? Without naming everybody. We can, that's why we, and then we got a church mother, mother Gaddy. You see? He say that these are my disciples. This is my family. Amen. Who that does, he or she that does the will of my father. That's what makes us brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm going to go somewhere this morning. He said, he pointed at his disciples and said, look, these are my mother and brothers. What he meant was that those who were the children of God, remember, we are family. But what he meant that those who were the children of God by adoption, were adopted into the family through grace, were his brethren and were as dear to him as his own biological mother and brothers and sisters. And then he said, for whosoever shall do the will of my father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother 
my sister and my mother. Now, sometimes we get carried away calling everybody brother, so-and-so, sister, so-and-so, but everybody ain't your brother and sister just because they're in church. I wish I had some help this morning. They say, he that do it the will of my father. That's your brother and sister. See, we just, you know, we get carried away sometimes. Now, there's a popular saying that's going around that teaches that everyone on earth or everyone on the planet is part of the family of God. Some even claim we're all children of God. Y'all ever heard that? I hear it quite often. I know some of you hear it too. I know it sounds good. After all, wouldn't it be great if all humanity was one big family with the same father? But there's just one problem with that church. The Bible never teaches that we're all God's children. Or oh, y'all might as well say amen. I've been guilty of it myself in the past when I didn't know no better. We all God's children. How many of y'all done say that before, thought like that? Hey, man, we all got you. But the Bible don't teach that. That's something we heard or something that sounds good and we would like to believe. While it is true, watch this, we are all God's creation. You get me? And that we belong to him because we were made by him and for him. But if the truth be told, we are not all his children. And yes, before you stone me this morning, God does love all people. Come on, somebody. He loves all of his creation. We know that. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his own. We know that, right? Amen. Watch this here. It goes on to say, and, uh, and, and you know, just like God loves everybody, we should love everybody as well, right? So it goes on to say in John 13, 34 and 35, a new commandment, Jesus said, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. And he said, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one to another. Our love and how we treat people identifies that we've been with Christ, Amen. that we're new people. Amen. You can't be nasty and say, I'm a child of God. Amen. Can't be rolling your eyes at me and talking about you a child of God. Amen. Can't be lying on me and talking about me and telling me that you're a child of God. Can't be on the phone gossiping about me and telling me that you're a child of God and then when you get in my face skinning and grinning. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. He said, your love one to another identifies you as my disciples. A disciple is someone who has been taught. Amen. See, we didn't always love everybody. I wish I had some help today. Y'all going to be real with me? Oh, man, you talk about me. Oh, you don't know me, do you? Uh, you lie on me, I might want to knock on your door. That was old me, see. That was old me. Amen. You kill my dog, I'm going to kill your cat. Something, you know. Come on, somebody. That's old us, right? But now we're disciples of Christ, meaning we have been learned. We have been taught. We have been filled with the Holy Ghost. Somebody say Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Ain't nothing wrong with saying Holy Ghost. I know a lot of people like to say Holy Spirit. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But we've been filled with the Holy Ghost. We're different now. That's why I say, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a what? A new creature, a new creation. Old things are passed away. My old manner of life. You know, my old manner of getting mad and getting out of hand. And, you know, you talking about me, I'm going to talk about you. No, we don't work like that no more. I've been changed. Old things are passed away. And what? Behold, all things become new. So, in fact, Jesus, a God, loved us enough that he sent his only begotten son, right? And the Bible tells us that while we were all still dead in our sins, God sent his son to the earth to do what? To die for us. That's how much he loved us, right? But that still doesn't mean that we're all his sons and daughters. I'm going somewhere. Look at your neighbor and say, Pastor, going somewhere. Now watch this. No. We're not all God's children. So does now, does this contradict my thought this morning when I say that we're a family? No, of course not. It doesn't contradict it because I can't be a child of God if I'm still comfortable living in my sins. And I still continue to live in my sin. In fact, even many who claim to be Christians and say they believe in Jesus are not God's children. Y'all hold your rocks. Somebody probably saying, hold on, pastor. 
How can you say that someone who believes in Jesus still may not be a child of God? Well, let's go to the ultimate authority. Somebody say, let's go to the Bible. Let's go to the Bible. I ain't got to turn to it because I got it written down here. But listen, you can make note of it and turn to it. Let's go to the Bible. The Bible says in James 2.19. Look at your neighbor and say James 2.19. James 2.19 says, Thou believest that there is one God. How many of you in here believe there's one God? By a show of hands. All right, so James must be talking to us. He said, Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. He said, the devils also believe in Trump. Uh-oh. What? Yeah. So just because I say I believe in God, that don't make me no different. The devils believe too. Yeah. And he said, they tremble at it. Watch this. I kind of feel like somebody's still questioning me about this here. Okay, let's go back to the Bible. Somebody say, go back to the Bible. Back to the Bible. Let's see what Jesus said in Matthew 7, verses 21 through 23, I believe it is. Let's see what Jesus said. Let's see what the Bible says. Amen? That's the ultimate authority, right? right. The Bible says it. I believe it. Yeah. And what? That settles it, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's see what, what, what Jesus said. Now, this is Jesus talking. Amen. Uh, uh, from the writer of Matthew, quoting or writing down what he heard Jesus say. Jesus said, Matthew 7, 21, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Uh-oh. But he that doeth the what? Uh, ain't that what Jesus said earlier? He said, who is my mother? Who is my brother? These. If anyone that does the will of my father, you get it? Does. Somebody say does. Does the will. That's action. Action does what? Come on, somebody. Finish my sentence for me. Action does what? Speak louder, Speak louder than words. We're on the same page. So Jesus said, not every one words that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will puts it into action of my Father, which is in heaven. And watch this. He said, look, I'm just paraphrasing, talking with the scripture. He said, many going to say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name we've cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then, Jesus said, and then when they say that, he said, then I will profess unto them I never knew you. Who is you? Depart from me, you, you work of the iniquity. Who is you? Watch this here. Can I talk a little bit? You ever thought you knew somebody, and then one day you just wonder, who is you? <laughs> who is you? You know, I'm learning more about you. Who is you? I don't know who you is no more. That's what Jesus is saying. Yeah, you did a lot of wonderful works. You prophesied in my name. He said you cast out devils, and now you want the credit for that? I did that through you. I wish I had some help this morning. You ain't got the power. The power comes from me. He'll use the devil for his works. How many of you know that? And he'll use anybody else. Because why? We his creation. Amen. Watch this. Jesus basically saying there are two fathers and two families. In John 8, 38 to 47. Y'all know I love scripture. John 8, 38 to 47, Jesus said, I speak that which I have seen with my father, and you do that which you have seen with your father. <laughs> Whoa. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. You telling me it's two fathers? Jesus said, I do that which I have seen of my father, John 8, 38 through 47. And you do that which you have seen with your father. This sounds interesting. Let's read on. Verse 39 says, They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. Abraham didn't act like you. Abraham was known as the father of faith. He said, but now you seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth. Why is it that people get so offended in people when they tell them the truth? They got that little saying, say the truth hurts, don't it? <laughs> but the truth is, the truth will make you free. All right? 
He said, but now you seek to kill me, a man that had told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Abraham didn't act like that. He trusted God. He walked by faith. That's why he was known as a father of faith. He did what his father told him, which is God. Watch this here, 41. You do the deeds of your father. He didn't say you do the deeds of our father. Get that? He said you do the deeds of your father. Then say they to him, we be not born of fornication. They still talking in the natural. <laughs> he said we have one father. They said we have one father, even God, and that's God. We, look what he said, we have one father, and that's God. Okay, let me pause for a minute, because people saying that we are all children of God, this didn't just start. Did you see that there? They tried to tell Jesus that we have one father, even God. Look at that. Way back then, they were saying, we all God's children, in other words. That's what they were saying. Watch this. It's getting interesting. Let's see what Jesus said. Verse 42. Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. Verse 44. You are of your father the devil. Let me just go on and tell you who your daddy is. Now watch this here. Watch this here. Understand this. He talking to religious folk. Church wasn't established then, but they had the synagogue and the places of worship. And he talking to the church. All, we would say today, church folk. He said, you're your father the devil. Ooh, I don't want to talk about that. But if some folk come into church, they, they, ain't a, they ain't God's children. Come on, somebody. You know how they act and how they carry yourself. Oh, I could get deep with it, but some of you see them at home. You know they ain't the same at home as they was up there testifying and jumping in church. Come on, somebody. He said, you are your father the devil, and the lust of your father you would do. Watch this. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own or his own self, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Why so many people get mad with the preacher? <laughs> Jesus said a prophet is least accepted in his own country his own home and amongst his own kin. Come on, somebody. Which of you convinces me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. You therefore hear them not because you're not of God. He that is of God will obey the word of God. You obey them not because you're not of God. He that hears the Father and is of the Father Amen. Come on, somebody. We'll do the will of God. But you're not doing the will of God because you're not God's children. You're not a child of God. How many of you know that if you tell somebody that today, that you of your father the devil, you better get ready for a fight. And that's why Jesus was in a physical and spiritual battle because he told the truth. He was only trying to set them free, but they couldn't see it. Because the truth will do what? It will set you free. And that's why I'm preaching today not to hurt anyone, but to help somebody. Because everybody may be professing that they're a child of God, and you need to see yourself in the word today, that maybe by your lifestyle, by your character, by your nature, that you are not what you are professing to be. But it's not too late to be adopted into the family. It's not too late to become part of the family that we can say we are family. The truth is that we are not all God's children. The fact that those who are not saved are not children of God is seen in 1 John 3 and 10. He says it like this. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Now, remember, somebody may say, well, he's talking about the devil, the devil. This is the Bible. That's why I want you to know where the scripture is. I'm repeating what God gave the writers to put in the Bible. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone. Woo, here you go. Anyone. Somebody say anyone. anyone. That covers a lot of people, don't it? Anyone who does not do what is right is not a child of God. Nor is anyone who does not love his brother. 
So to say that we're all God's children is an attractive, tolerant way to speak about people today, but it's not in the Bible. We're not all God's children. Come on, somebody. We're all God's creatures, created by God. And God loves everyone and wants them to be saved. But only those who put their faith in Jesus Christ becomes his children. He makes it clear in John, the first chapter, uh, 12 and 13. To all who received him, Jesus, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. Children born not of the natural descent or of human decision or husband's will, but are born of God. That's why I say we must be what? Born again. Amen. So it's only when we pray, place our faith in Jesus Christ that God becomes our father and we become his children and other believers become our brothers and sisters. And the church becomes our spiritual family. So we are family, right? right? When you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then you are born again into God's eternal family. Forever family, you get me? And when you're part of his family, there are certain privileges, certain benefits, and certain blessings that are ours or that are yours and yours alone. See, all the promises of God ain't for everybody. Amen. There are some promises that are just for the children of God. Yes. But a lot of people that claim to be children of God go around quoting them promises. Yes. I wish I had some help today. Because I'm a child of God, I can now say when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him because I'm in the family. I can now say that no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise up against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn because I'm in the family. I can now say and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God. To them who are called according to his purposes. Because I'm in the family. I can now say. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us. Who can be against us? I can say that because I'm now in the family. I can now say that I am persuaded. That neither death nor life. Nor angels nor principalities. Nor powers nor things present. Nor, nor things to come. Nor height nor depth. Nor any other creature shall be able to separate us, or let me put it like this, shall be able to separate me and you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, because we are family. Now here's what God's word says about us as family members. Galatians 4, 6, and 7 says, and because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son, talking about the Holy Ghost, into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but now you are a son. Yes. And if a son, then you are an heir of God through Christ. Yes. Romans 8, 14 to 17. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, talking about the Holy Ghost, they are the sons of God. Yes. For you have not received a spond the spirit of bondage again to fear. Because God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of what? Love power and a sound man but you have received a spirit of adoption whereby we cry Abba Father the spirit itself the Holy Ghost itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God and if we are the children of God then we are heirs heirs of God joint heirs with the Lord Jesus Christ and so be that we suffer with him that we may be also glorified with him now I got to close this morning but I need you to know who you are. Now, if you have truly repented, truly received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, come on and lift up your right hand and say with me, I'm a child of God. Come on and say it again. I'm a child of God. Come on and say I'm born again. Say I'm redeemed. I'm a new creation because I'm in Christ. I am the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. I am his workmanship created in his image. I am of a chosen generation. I am of a royal priesthood. I am in God's holy nation. I'm walking with the light of God. I'm an heir of God. 
I'm a joint heir with Christ. I'm more than a conqueror in Jesus Christ. Come on and say it because life and death is in the power of the tongue. Speak it over yourself. I am protected. I am led by the Holy Ghost. I am a child of God. In God's eyes, I'm a jewel. I'm the apple of his eye. I can't hear you out there. Come on and say, I belong to God. I did not choose him. But he chose me. We are God's own people. We are God's children. Now come on and say it. We are family. We are family. You see, when we truly understand this, and really know who we are, then and only then will we be able to fulfill our God-given purpose on this earth. Now, as I close, have you ever heard the phrase that blood is thicker than water? What that usually means is that the family ties are usually stronger than any other relationship. Now, I've got a new one for you to think on. Jesus' blood. It's thicker than family bloodlines. Oh, I'm going to say it again. I say Jesus' blood. It's thicker than any family bloodline. See, family can't save you. Family can't redeem you. Family, oh, I wish I had some help tonight. When you're in your deepest sorrow, you don't pray to family. Oh, I wish I had some help today. When you need help, you say, help me, Lord. Because sometimes family can't help you. Sometimes family won't help you. I wish I had some help today. You see, Jesus' blood is thicker than family bloodline. Because it's only through Jesus' blood that was shed on the cross that we can be accepted into the family of God. Now, we all have all kinds of people who are part of our church family. So don't expect a perfect church. Just as there aren't any perfect families, neither are the churches perfect. I found this little poem that says, If you should find a perfect church without one fault or smear, for goodness sake, don't join that church because you spoil the atmosphere. But since no perfect church exists, we're all imperfect men, then please stop looking for that church and love the church you're in. So keep on serving in your church until the resurrection. And then we all will form the church that's without imperfection. Do I have any help today? And we should all thank God for his amazing grace that accepted us into the family without demanding that we be perfect before we got saved. I'm reminded of 2 Peter 3 and 9. The Lord is not slight concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but he is long-suffering to us with. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come unto repentance. Somebody ought to shout, thank you, Jesus, for being long-suffering to me. Romans 5 and 8, put it like this. But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I feel like preaching now, because somebody said, I say somebody said that he took off his glory. He prepared himself a body like ours. And he came down through 42 generations. And he was born to a virgin by the name of Mary. Somebody said for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. That he might destroy the works of the devil. And that's all because I heard Jesus said, For the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which was lost. And I thank God because that was me. You see, I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was blind, but now I see. You see, he brought me out of darkness <laughs> into the marvelous light. Do I have any help today? Is there anybody in here who can say he brought you out of darkness into the marvelous light? <laughs> Is there anybody in here who can say like the Apostle Paul the scales have fallen from my eyes. I can see now what I couldn't see before. Then I heard the apostle Paul say that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. 
I stopped by this morning to tell somebody, if you want to be in the family, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe that Jesus was raised from the dead in your heart. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, somebody say the Bible says. The Bible says, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Whosoever means whatever person, whatever you've done, whatever you've spoken. Oh, I wish I had some help today. Whatever you've even thought about. He said, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. So whosoever, somebody say whosoever, shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So we got to stop picking and choosing who we want to be saved. I wish I had some help today. Because there's a lot of churches that way. A lot of preachers that way. Sometimes they turn a blind eye. But they want to pick and choose who they want to be saved. But I read in the Bible that God is not a respecter of persons. We were all dirty, filthy sinners. Until we were adopted into the family of Christ. He says, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? I got to go to my seat now. But I declare unto you the gospel of Jesus Christ. How that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And he was buried in a sealed tomb. And he rose on the third day, according to the scriptures. Somebody said early Sunday morning, he got up with all power, power to heal, power to deliver, power to set free, power to save. Somebody said he came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So that's the only reason that we can say we are family. So look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, are we family? Have you given your life to the Lord? If you've given your life to the Lord, then we are family. We may not have the same mama. We may not have the same daddy, but we are family. Your brothers and sisters may not be my blood brothers and sisters. I know I've been hearing you say the blood is thicker than water, but the blood is on my life. The blood is on our life. It's greater than any bloodline. Do I have any help today? That's the only reason we can say we are family. Come on and give the Lord praise. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Now as I close this morning, for the third time, eventually, Jesus' biological family believed that he really was the son of God. And that's the lifestyle that we got to live because he let them know what his priorities was. His priorities was the mission that had been given him. He said, I come not to do my will, but the will of him that sent me, which is God. We, look at your neighbor, say we. we. As the children of God, we got to get our priorities right. You see, his half-brother James became the leader of the church in Jerusalem. And he also wrote the book of James. Another half-brother. Why are you saying half-brother? Because he was a son of God. See, another half-brother, Jude, wrote the short book entitled Jude, which comes right before the book of Revelations. So we see that after, somebody say after the resurrection, after the resurrection. they believed, they seen. Maybe they started believing before then, but now they really believe. And that's what it takes for us. We don't have to wait on the resurrection anymore. The resurrection has already happened. Jesus is alive, and he's alive forevermore. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, we know that Jesus always loved and honored his mother because she was at the cross when Jesus was being crucified. And he asked his friend, 
the one who loved him, the Apostle John, to take care of my mother. And after the resurrection, Mary, the mother of Jesus, is mentioned being with the disciples who were praying in the upper room on the day of Pentecost. But she's never mentioned again in the New Testament. Now, if you read this passage this morning, and you only heard Jesus gently rebuffing his biological family, you missed the whole point. Because Jesus used the presence of his natural family to teach all of us that there is another family, a much larger family. No matter how big your family reunion is, it's not as big as the family of God. Come on, somebody. Do you hear me today? In which you can find acceptance. We can find acceptance in the family of God. And sometimes in our natural families, sometimes, maybe not you, but some people are not even accepted in their natural family. That's why he said a prophet is only without honor in his own country, in his own home, and amongst his kin. That's how come, <laughs> Lord knows I don't want to preach about that, but that's how come a lot of, let me put it like this, yeah, a lot of crooked preachers. There's come a lot of crooked preachers. When they start a ministry, they go off somewhere else where people don't know them at. And boy, they accept them there. But people back home, I know you. You know, we know you. You see? And we ought to be known. We want to be known wherever we're at. So live a life that's pleasing unto God. That's why he said, who is my mother? Who is my brother? He pointed at his disciples. He said, these are my mother and my brother. His followers, those that have accepted Jesus Christ, said, those that do the will of my father, those are my mother and my brother. Okay, we're standing. We're standing. So that's why I can say, Sister Toya, first lady, I, I still call her Sister Howard sometimes my sister. She's my wife, but she's my sister in Christ. Y'all get that there? Y'all get that? Hard to get. See what I'm saying? We can say that there, you know, because we're brothers and sisters because we are believers. We've accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Now listen, my message by no means is intended to talk about biological families, because you ought to love your mama. You ought to love your daddy. You ought to love your brothers and sisters. But there's a family that's more important. Y'all get me? There's a family that's more important, and that's the family of God. Because mama ain't got no heaven to put me in. Amen. Dad ain't got no heaven to put me in. Amen. My brothers and sisters ain't got no heaven to put me in. Right. Do y'all hear me today? But God, Amen. that's our family. That's the family we want to be in. And if you love God, here you go. Here you go. This is how I close it. If you love God, if you're in the family of God, and you love God, he said, by your love one to another shall all men know that you're my disciples. If you really love God and you're in the family of God, you're going to love mom and daddy, brothers and sisters. That's right. Even if they don't love you. Amen. Even, even, watch this here. Even if they don't believe who you, who you are or believe in you, you're still going to love them and keep going. Come on, somebody. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, sir. Amen.